Good morning and welcome to worship at First Congregational Church of Bellingham. Whether you're joining us here in the sanctuary or joining us online in what we call our bigger balcony or in our actual balcony, also that, um, wherever you are, it's great to have you with us. I have a few announcements as we begin our worship together. Um, uh, one part of our time of, of, of prayer and, and reflection and, and giving is, is an opportunity to give to the congregation. As the Spirit leads you, um, you can give online with the methods uh, mentioned in the bulletin here. Uh, if you'd like to give cash or checks, you, um, there'll be little plates uh, in the um, narthex area as you leave through either sets of doors. Um, I feel like I said that announcement just really well. I think that was just very clear. That's just to say we'll have ushers with plates if you'd like to give money or checks. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, coming up Saturday, March 2nd, um, Pat Gillum and some other folks here at First Congregational are organizing to um, get some folks on a bus to Olympia for the Washington State Poor People's Campaign March and Action on March 2nd. Um, if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, you can reach out to Pat. You can let me know. I'd love to share more about the good work that the Poor People's Campaign is doing here in Washington. Also on the justice front, um, beginning Saturday, March 9th, we're going to do a um, three-month series, one Saturday each month, on extensive uh, anti-racism training here at First Congregational. If you'd like to be part of that, you can let me know. You can also reach out to Sharon Camblin. Um, we'd love to tell you more about it. After worship today, uh, we'll have our congregation's annual meeting. Um, important conversations about structure, about staffing, and about the future of our congregation. So you can join us on Zoom. Um, if you're on Zoom already, I think that same Zoom link will work. If you're here in person, you can uh, grab a cup of coffee or a slice of pie or just... Um, Wait here in the sanctuary, and we'll uh, start soon after worship ends. The last announcement that I want to share is the most important. I was telling somebody yesterday that maybe this is the most important thing I say most Sundays, and it's this. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on your doubt and faith journey, no matter what brings you or what you carry, you are welcome in this place. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. Let's begin our time of worship together. So I'm going to go away from Mark's gospel this week, off our reading of texts that we've been going through in the Bible, to bring us a story from the book of the Acts, Acts of the Apostles. And the story today goes something like this. After Jesus' death and resurrection, after apostles were sent out to share the good news of God's kingdom, after Christianity had begun to spread throughout the known world, it was still not popular with the Roman Empire. Now, Paul, one of the great teachers of that time, was arrested for his preaching around 600, sorry, around 60 CE. And he appealed to have a viewing before the emperor. He was arrested, he was going to be put on trial, and he says, no, I want to stand before Caesar. Let me speak to the man himself. 
And so among a bunch of other prisoners, Paul was put on a ship heading to Rome. Now the season was late for sailing this part of the Mediterranean, and Paul tried warning his captors that this was not a good idea to set sail at this time of year. But they chose to sail on. You can imagine what happened. Buffeted by wind and waves, it started to get very tenuous, and they could tell that things were not going well for them, so they started to lighten the ship, throwing things overboard, all the cargo, all the food. But in the night, Paul had a visitation. An angel of the eternal stood before him, and what do the angels always say? Don't be afraid, fear not. And so he said to Paul, don't be afraid, that Paul would get to stand before the emperor, and not only that, that nobody on this ship was going to be lost. Now, after 14 days, the ship ran aground on the shoals of Malta. The ship was beginning to break apart in the waves and the wind that was buffeting it. And those who were able to swim jumped overboard to be able to get to shore. And those who couldn't grabbed on to parts of the broken ship and floated into safety. Everybody made it to shore. And there on the shore of Malta, they met the kindness of strangers. Malta's islanders built fires and protected them from the rains. And as sometimes happens between survivors and their deliverers, they began to share stories about themselves. They began to talk with one another about what was going on in their lives. And Paul, at one point, heard the story of the island leader's father. And that father was desperately ill. Paul, feeling like he had a word of good news, went to that father. And he prayed with him, and he laid hands on him, and he was healed. And so, of course, that wasn't the end, right? Everybody hears about this, and everybody comes together. And before the prisoners boarded another ship for Rome, three months later, Paul was able to share the good news of God's compassion and justice with all of the people of Malta, leaving quite a mark on that community, making Paul and those islanders a lasting gift to one another. Not just the islanders saving those shipwrecked, but those who came to shore sharing good news as well. Time again. I'm doing a lav mic today so I can have both hands because, you know, it's a two hand kind of day. Okay, kiddos. Last time we did this, we met up here and we went out there. Today, we're going to meet out there, and we're going to come in here. So I need everybody to meet me by the back doors. Here we go. Come on, kiddos. Here we go. I need lots of helpers today. Yep, you guys too. Come on. Here we go. Just a moment, everybody else. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. OK, so I need kind of two lines right here. Two lines right here. Perfect. You guys are great. If I'm, I also probably need it's a two-hand day, so you might have to set the stuffies down. Two hand, perfect. Oh, that's what I need. Thank you. Perfect. OK. So here, can you come here? You hold this right here. Yep, perfect. OK. And then you come here. You hold this right there. Perfect. Great. OK. And then you two are going to be a team. You guys stand right here. Here, why don't you come right here? Perfect. Great. Good job. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Who's going to be my driver? Uh, I could. Oh. I'll be the driver. Oh. I'll be the driver. Well, I need some. Here, you're you're holding. Hold this. Issa, come here. Wait, I Come here. OK, you're going to drive? Drive right there. Perfect. All right. OK, we're almost ready, I promise. OK. 
Okay. All right. So, all right. Is everybody listening? So yeah. today's story is about a group of people on a boat, yeah. and we are currently on a boat. Okay. So we are going to go in together because we're sailing on the sea. So everybody just pick up your sides, and together, slowly, we're just going to walk our way in. Yep, keep going. Working our way in. And it's a beautiful day. It's sunny. Our boat, our boat broke it's down. lovely. But then do you know what happened? What? A storm started. I'm, I'm looking for audience participation. Look down. Look down. Look down. Yeah, pull those up. Pull it up. Wave them high. Wave. Where are our waves? Come on. There we go. Yep, grab your wave. Grab your waves. All right, there we go. Yep, there's the waves. Waves are coming. Look, look down below your pews. Okay. There was such a storm, you guys. They were getting tossed about. And it wasn't good. And it was going right and left. And it was so wavy. And the boat started to break apart. And then they got up to that. You see the wood up there? You see that? Yeah, that's actually a sandbar. And they hit the sandbar. And they had a shipwreck. And the boat broke apart. And everybody fell down. Woo! Yeah, and then they rested on the sandbar for a second because that was a lot, right? So, so now they're on this sandbar. And um, the sandbar, though, you know what's cool about sandbars is it means they're close to an island, right? Sandbars happen close to land. So that's pretty cool. So you know what they did? I think they might have, this wasn't in the story. I'm just imagining. I think what they might have done is use these parts of the ship. Here, bring that part up here. Bring it up here. But be careful because there's a row of electric eels right here and a palm tree. So just, yeah, right there. Perfect. Perfect. Great. They took this part of the ship, which is, you know, falling apart, really, is what's happening. And then I think they might have used the mast and then kind of went like that. And they built a shelter. Here, let me, let's have another person. Of the ship. Let's send this one. Yeah. Come on. That one looks way more sturdy. Yeah, those look a little more sturdy. This has been through quite a few uh, Halloweens and stuff, so you know. Oh, okay. Let's have another one. Oh, perfect. Oh, gosh. Good job. Okay. Now come, be careful of that row of electric eels, but come, come sit in our shelter here. Oh, that's perfect. That's what I need next. Perfect. I think that's an extra one. Yeah, come sit in our shelter there. That's perfect. Okay. There's a little shelter. Oh my gosh, perfect. It's, it's a very delicate shelter though, so we'll just be. So they used parts of the boat as shelter. What if they used, oh, <laughs> what if they used the wheel as a fire pit? What? Maybe they use the wheel as a fire pit here. Ow, I'm scared. There we go. You got that, Dabby? There we go. Uh, uh, yeah, you know. Okay. When they were on the ocean, when they were on the ocean, hey, Isa, eyes on me. Isa, Isa, my kiddo, hi, eyes on me. Ready, listening? Perfect. When they were on the ocean, a boat was exactly what they needed, right? It was perfect. It was sunny, they were sailing, it was great. But then when that storm came, it started to break the boat apart, they didn't really, and then they ended up on a sandbar, they didn't really need a boat anymore, did they? No, they got to an island, and what did they need? Shelter, fire. Maybe they used, maybe they used the sail as a net for fish, right? But the point is, is that all of the parts of the boat still did their job. They just had to do it in a different way, right? The wood is designed to keep water out, which is great when it's in the shape of a boat and you're on the ocean, but when you're on land, that can be really good for shelter, right? Yeah. And a sail really helps with the wind, but it could also catch fish, or it could be used as a blanket, right? There's lots of things. There's lots of ways that you can use these really well-crafted things in new ways, right? Right. <laughs> Into falling apart shelters. All right, will you pray with me? All right. God, thank you for giving us creativity and problem solving and imagination and dreaming of what things can become. And thank you for giving us the time to stop and think about what it is that we really need at any one time. Amen. Amen. Okay, now you can go out and hang out with Josh. I will pick this all up. <laughs>
All right, head on out to Josh, please. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, please rise in body or spirit for the community prayer. Holy One, sometimes life feels like a shipwreck. We're thrown into roiling waters, clinging to whatever remains for us. Thank you for locals who welcome us in when we're adrift. Thank you for their wisdom and willingness to share what they know and have. Help us remember we have much to share, too, even when we feel rocked by change. Amen. So to all my fellow gardeners out there who, who find really rich, dark, ar aromatic compost sort of orgasmic, um, you're going to really love this poem. Okay. Hear ye, hear ye, I am here to holler that I have hauled tons, by which I don't mean a lot, I mean tons of cow shit, and stood ankle deep in swales of maggots, swirling the bent spear grain, beer grains, <laughs> the brewery man was good enough to dump off, holding his nose, however, for they didn't, they smelled very bad. But make the compost writhe, giddy, and lick its lips, twirling dung with my pitchfork again and again, with hundreds and hundreds of other people. We dreamt an orchard this way, 
furring our brows and hauling our wheelbarrows and sweating through our shirts. And two years later, there was a party at which trees were sunk into the well-fed earth, one of which, a Liberty apple, after being watered in, was tamped down by a baby, barefoot, with a bow hanging in her hair, biting her lip in her joyous work. This is the sound of our prayer, and the Spirit intercedes for us. With sighs, with sighs too deep for words. With sighs, with sighs too deep for words. With sighs, with sighs too deep for words. With sighs, I invite you to enter into this time of prayer as Spirit leads you, as mystery invites you. I invite you to hold silence and grace with us or name prayers in your heart or if you like, name prayers out loud for all of us to share. I have a few to share that have come our way myself. I invite prayers this week for Sharon Camblin's mom, Marguerite Fisher, as she is uh, part of the hospice process and as Sharon and Bruce go to visit her today. Pray for Larry Irwin, still in the hospital, and for Michael Meyer, still at Silverado, as he continues to decline. Pray for Mary and all who love him in this season. What prayers are there to share with each other this morning? Kathleen. For Shannon and Jack, as Shannon uh, is in the last few weeks of her pregnancy. Joyce. Oh, blessings and congratulations on the oncoming marriage of Chris, marriage of Chris and Claudia um, getting married on Valentine's Day coming up. Thank you for Noah's safe return from his school trip to Vietnam. Thank you. Dick brings prayers of gratitude for yesterday's celebration and all the ways the community has helped him and so many others um, following Kay's death. Thanks be to God. Yeah, prayers of comfort for all of those who mark the year anniversary of Bobby Virta's passing uh, coming up tomorrow. Prayers of thanksgiving for Rudy's sisters in the midst of rainstorms and earthquakes in Southern California. I have my own prayer of gratitude for the few of us that went down to the Interfaith Advocacy Day in Olympia this Thursday, um, but especially for all of those who are raising their voices for justice and peace in our community and beyond. And prayers for all of us as we begin our Lenten journey 
um, this Ash Wednesday, this, this coming Wednesday, and whatever Lent invites us into. I invite you now into a time of silence, and then we'll join together in the prayer of Jesus printed in the bulletin or whatever language is comfortable, comfortable for you. God of mystery and change, God of comfort, God of heartbreak and ecstasy. We bring you the prayers that we have named out loud. Prayers for this gathering, for this congregation, for this meeting. Prayers also for this community, for your broken world, for all the places torn apart by violence and injustice. God, hear the prayers we speak and the prayers we hold and the prayers that move in our bodies, sighs deeper than words. We pray all this in your many names and in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray like this. Our parent who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the sound of our prayers, and the Spirit intercedes for us. With sighs, with sighs too deep for words. This is the sound of sighs, with sighs too deep for words. With sighs. Sighs to deep for words with sighs, with sighs to deep for words. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is actually two chapters, Acts 27 and 28, but don't worry, it's only selected verses from the Common English Bible. Um, when it was determined that we were to sail to Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were placed in the custody of a centurion named Julius of the Imperial Company. We boarded a ship. We sailed along the coast only with difficulty until we came to a place called Good Harbors. Much time had been lost, and the voyage was now dangerous. Paul warned them, Men, I see that our voyage will suffer damage and great loss, not only for the cargo and the ship, but also for our lives. But the centurion was persuaded more by the ship's pilot and captain than by Paul's advice. Before long, a hurricane-strength wind known as a northeaster swept down from Crete. The ship was caught in the storm and couldn't be turned into the wind. So we gave in to it, and it carried us along. We were so battered by the violent storm, all hope of our being saved from this peril faded. For a long time, no one had eaten. Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have complied with my instructions not to sail from Crete. Then we would have avoided this damage and loss. Now I urge you to be encouraged. Not one of your lives will be lost, though we will lose the ship. 
Last night, an angel from the God to whom I belong and whom I worship stood beside me. The angel said, don't be afraid, Paul. You must stand as a prisoner before Caesar. Indeed, God has also graciously given you everyone sailing with you. Be encouraged, men. I have faith in God that it will be exactly as God told me. However, we must run aground on some island. Fourteen days later, fast forward, they struck a sandbar and the ship ran aground. The bow was stuck and it wouldn't move. And the stern was broken into pieces by the force of the waves. The soldiers decided to kill the prisoners to keep them from swimming to shore and escaping. However, the centurion wanted to save Paul, so he stopped them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and head for land. He ordered the rest to grab hold of planks or debris from the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. After reaching land safely, we learned that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us extraordinary kindness. Because it was rainy and cold, they built a fire and welcomed all of us. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. February 10th was a feast day on the island of Malti. A little north, the feast of St. Paul's shipwreck. Uh, yeah. It's a big to do on Malta, and it was just yesterday. The time clone into Malta's shag. How the COVID 19 stoked menacing storms. On January, that all floating in the surf. Some and jetsam for years. And of course the church the sick of the Dean cites that one in three practicing Christians stopped attending church during the pandemic. An early report entirely news, right? I discussions have been happening for at least a quarter century. After two millennia, a thousand years, it makes Christians folks. It's called resurrection. Sound of the church. We worry about the changes in us. They celebrate still one with God creation. The ship falls apart. Sometimes and begin Jesus Christ with the church seems like of Christianity goes on to communicate with the locals. And we might have to rough it a bit as we get going. For those of you who may be visiting for the first time, you wonder, well, what's happening? Well, it's nothing that is unfamiliar to the rest of our culture. Other nonprofits also facing downsizing. This is the reality of 2024, but it doesn't mean that everything is gone. It might mean that things are a little bit liberating even. Christ has turned the tables as he is known to do in so many stories, right? Maybe in this time, holy curiosity matters more than excellence. Maybe we don't have to get it all right and figure it all out. And I'm talking in our personal lives as well as the church. Maybe holy curiosity is what's going to save us. Maybe being kind 
is more important than being right in our own lives as well as in the life of the church. Kindness saves us. Discerning Jesus' path is just as important as declaring it. Christian time, listening for what that means today is so important. What if the flotsam of this broken ship, the beams that carry us to shore, what if they can be built into something that isn't just a shelter, but a place to move out from for new ways of ministering. Again, like all human creations, religious institutions come from particular moments in history and they come and go accordingly. But God is already doing a new thing. We are invited to join God in this exciting expedition. Okay, take a breath. Hear this as well, church. No matter what happens with our congregation's changes, I want you to know I am here for this with you. On January 1st, 2025, that's less than a year from today, we will celebrate my 10th anniversary among you. Yes, I am here for this. I am here with you and dedicated as lead pastor among you to whatever it is that we're becoming, to whatever it is that God is leading us toward. So please don't expend any energy on worrying about that. There is enough for us to be wondering about. When we're on land, we no longer need a boat. But what we carry with us can be used for something new. And maybe by the time we celebrate my 10th anniversary next year, maybe we will also begin to see what is emerging, what is being built. And maybe we can even celebrate our own Feast of St. Paul's Shipwreck. I believe this. I believe in the Spirit's movement in this place as it moved in Malta. And I believe in the ministry that each of you brings with it to go out into this world and serve in love and justice and compassion. I believe that we have so much more ministry to do together. I believe in God using us to build the beloved community in God's world, right here. May it be so. Amen.
Thank you, choir, for your hallelujahs. I needed those this morning. So my name is Janet, and I'm addicted to change. Um, and it's a good th- <laughs> Hi, Dobby. It's a good thing, too, because um, I get paid very well to help individuals and organizations change in my business. And in my personal life, um, I've had a lot of shipwrecks. And, and, and I realize that my curiosity has always been stronger than my fear. So I actually embrace personal change as well. And, 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 and that said, I want to acknowledge that change for so many people, and shipwrecks particularly, are hard and scary. So I've been asked to share this morning an experience of divine's help in dealing with a change in my life. And the story I'm about to share, uh, it's going to kind of fall into the category of extreme woo-woo for some of you. And so if you want to roll your eyes and do it big, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, so all of my life, except for a trial separation during Vietnam, and I was the one who filed for separation, not spirit, um, I had, I've had a really close, intimate relationship with my with spirit, and you can call it spirit guide, angel, divine, intuition, whatever. It it started when I was seven and I was dying and I was really lonely and scared, and spirit was the only one I had to talk to. Now, most kids have an imaginary friend, but I had a spirit guide. Um, So my story is that I owned a home in rural Whatcom County for 25 years, the last 12 of which my partner shared that home with me, Joanne whom a lot of you knew. When she was dying of cancer, we decided uh, that we had to leave this beloved home and move into town to be closer to resources. And this was a really big change because we had an, a very quiet acre of gardens on the salt water. And we were thinking, here we were, planning to move to <laughs> noisy urban Bellingham. Um, so our deal, our, so we, we, we created this vision, really specific, wrote it down, all the have-to-haves, the nice-to-haves, et cetera. We did that work. And our dear realtor, Sharon Allen, I don't know if you're here, but you know Sharon, um, took us one day to six houses, none of which even piqued our curiosity, and we were, we were really discouraged. And as we were ending our tour, she said, oh, a house just, came, just got listed. Do you want to see one more? And we all went, oh, sure. So, so we, she took us to this house, and I fell in love instantly. I mean, it had everything on the have-to-have list. It was on a quiet, dead-end gravel drive in the Arboretum, and it was only a 15-minute walk to downtown. So, location, location. Jo- Joanne, however, my partner, was not excited uh, because it was clear she was a sun worshiper, and it was clear that this house, surrounded by trees in the Arboretum, was not going to get a lot of sun other than the middle of summer. So because I knew she had about a year to live, I, I wanted that to be a good year. And so we said, OK, sorry, no. And we drove the long 30 minutes home. But the whole drive home, I had this nagging sense that this was the house and we had to move quickly before she deteriorated and couldn't help in the move. Um, So when we got home, I left to get in my car and came back to the house. And I, fortunately it was empty, okay. So I sprawled, (laughs) no, I didn't go in the house. So I sprawled on the front at the front of the house on the ground. And I, I had my normal chat with Spirit that I've had a lot in my life. And this time I said, okay, Spirit, this is a huge decision, not one that I would normally make very quickly. You know that. Um, but I want you to give me a sign, a physical, really clear physical sign, if we are to buy this house like today. Um, so I lay there and waited. and. And all I can say in terms of what I experienced, it felt like an electrical shock going through my entire body. Actually, it was painful. And I was not lying on wet grass in the thunderstorm. So I, I, being this kind of skeptic that I am, even after this, what, 60, 65-year relationship with spirit, 
I said, well, okay, just to make sure that just wasn't a neuropathy of some kind, could you, um, could you just give me that signal one more time, but, but be more gentle this time because it really hurt. So, I, yeah. so this time what I got was just this kind of delightful tingling throughout my whole body. Um, so I said, thank you, and I immediately called Joanne. And here's how the conversation went. Joanne, we have to buy this house, like, right today, now. So get out here. And she goes, did you just have a conversation with Spirit? And I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> so she came, because she knows. Um, and we called, called Sharon, our realtor, and we put the money down, the earnest money down, we negotiated, and we bought the house in one day. By the end of the day, it was ours. And we moved right before Joanne deteriorated. And she had a great last year in that house. And I'm still there, and I love it. There were so many of the things that happened before and after that even my non-spiritual, non-religious friend said, you know, this, this, this was really spirit-led for this house for you. And I go, yeah, it really was. And it really was. And I don't have time to tell you all the rest. But what I want to say is change is easy for me, even during shipwrecks, because I don't do nostalgia. I, I, I just don't, I wasn't born with any nostalgia genes. And I, I really believe in that old saying, and it's a cliche, but you know, it'll all turn out in the end, and if it isn't working out, it's not the end. Um, and so I wanna say, since I have the mic, I wanna say a word about this church, because the change we're facing, I believe so strongly that as long as we have a clear vision, and strong intention, and we partner with spirit and with God, and we have the power of this community, we will evolve into something so surprisingly new and beautiful that I am so eager to begin this journey, and we get to do it together with God's help. Thank you.
Before our sending prayer, I will, um, I want to invite you as the Spirit leads you to stay for the congregational meeting if, if you can. Um, uh, uh, if you have children with you that would like to hang out with Josh, uh, Josh, they'll be in the, um, the social hall. Um, and also, I forgot to mention at the beginning that this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. In addition to being Valentine's Day, uh, join us at 7 for our Ash Wednesday service, if you like. Hear this sending prayer. Oh, and we'll, we'll join uh, together in our meeting in about five minutes, so, so do what you need to do. Um, that was the least prayerful sentence I could think of. And now, hear this prayer. God who delights in change and holds us close in the midst of shipwreck, make ways for us and teach us to follow in your way. In your many names, amen.